Carbon fiber nylon has been a rather controversial material, and I'm probably at least partly responsible for that. Welcome back to Hoffman Tactical, guys. In today's video, I'm going to talk about how to successfully print things from carbon fiber nylon and why you might want to do so. Before we dig in, I want to make two points. The first point is that all carbon fiber nylon is not the same. I have tested three different carbon fiber nylons with mixed results and uh, some carbon fiber nylons I do believe warp more than others. I don't know enough to give you definite answers on that right now though. I will when I do, um, but some are uh, more difficult to print than others. And secondly, just because a carbon fiber nylon is more expensive or it has a higher carbon content does not make it better. The higher carbon content nylons tend to have not as good layer adhesion, not as good impact resistance, and uh, a little bit better tensile strength. But there is kind of an optimal amount of carbon fiber. Um, and I don't know exactly what that is yet. I've only tested three different carbon fiber nylons and I won't name too many of them, but I will just mention that in today's video, the carbon fiber nylon I'm discussing is the push plastic carbon fiber nylon. And it is one of the lower cost carbon fiber nylons, if I may. I have used it with excellent results and with the right settings, it is really easy to print with. Just keep that in mind when selecting carbon fiber nylons that just because it has a really big price tag or it has like 25% carbon fiber does not mean it's gonna be a good choice. Second thing I wanna talk about is why would you want to print carbon fiber nylon over another filament? Well, the reason is it's an, actually an all around, um, has a good set of properties from tensile strength to layer adhesion to impact resistance to uh, thermal properties, heat resistance, and also printability. So I've said bad things about it in the past, um, either about the not having good layer heat adhesion, having poor impact resistance, or being difficult to print with. And I do have to say I was incorrect about carbon fiber nylon. The uh, testing I have done shows that in general, carbon fiber nylons, not always, ones with higher carbon contents can have problems, but carbon fiber nylons have very good layer adhesion. Their impact resistance is not the best. It's not like, it's not gonna be like PLA plus, but it is still uh, plenty, it's good enough. It's a lot better than PETG, so it's, and it doesn't shatter, so it's got good impact resistance. The tensile strength is excellent. The thermal resistance is also excellent. And the printability, if you use the right settings, um, it prints really easily with really, really nice surface finish. If you use the wrong settings, which we'll talk about a little bit later, it does warp horribly and it is hard to use. It is very finicky about the bed temperature and once you get that right, it's pretty easy to use. So all around carbon fiber nylon is just mechanically and thermally a good option to use uh, because it kind of covers all the bases. PLA plus mechanically is probably better than carbon fiber nylon, not quite as strong, um, but the layer adhesion is about as good and uh, maybe not quite as good, but pretty close. But impact resistance, PLA plus outdoes pretty much anything. So unfortunately it doesn't have the heat resistance. That's where carbon fiber nylon comes in. Carbon fiber nylon is really expensive though. So that's a decision you're gonna have to make, but it is an all around um, good option because it covers all the bases. Now let's talk about how to print it. There are three different steps or different categories that I'm gonna talk about here. Those are your uh, filament preparation, namely drying the filament. Uh, second is going to be your printer preparation. And then third is going to be slicing the uh, lower receiver or the, um, I didn't mean to say that, uh, part, uh, slicing the part and uh, getting your temperatures and everything tuned in where they need to be. So the first thing is going to time out real quick. I want to mention that there is a red button down below under the video. You know what that button is. I know what that button is, so I won't even mention what it does. But if you haven't already, um, go ahead and click that, that button down there to see the rest of my videos because I do do a lot of interesting filament testing videos, printing videos, and also videos about you know, the, the, the part in question that we're discussing. So um, be sure to do that and then also hit that little thumbs up button because it does help uh, the video get past the YouTube algorithm. Okay, let's get back to talking about carbon fiber nylon. So the first thing is going to be drying the filament. Nylon, unfortunately, does have some downsides and one of the bigger ones of those, other than the cost, is that it has extremely, um, very hydroscopic. It really likes to absorb moisture if left out in the open. And when it does absorb moisture, it very uh, much degrades your print quality and is really not an option. So you have to have dry filament. In most manufacturers, the filament isn't really dry enough even when you get it. So you've got to dry it anyway, um, even if you take it right out of the package and go to print with it. So what I do to dry nylon is I dry it for an excess of 12 hours at 180 degrees Fahrenheit. Now I used to dry it around 150 to 160 degrees Fahrenheit and it was, wasn't cutting it. It wasn't getting uh, dry enough. And when it's not dry, it likes, it tends to warp more and you get bad surface finish and lots of bad things. So 180 degrees Fahrenheit is probably the minimum temperature you want to print at. Something 
up between 180 and 220 degrees Fahrenheit is probably a good range of temperature to dry the nylon in. And as I said, I dry it for like 12 hours or uh, even more than that, normally like two days in a row, and I put it in a sealed container with desiccant in between. And I store it in a sealed container with desiccant. Also, when printing with, the, with the, any nylon, I have it in a uh, sealed container with desiccant, which the filament runs out of that container and into the printer. So it's got like a dry pod all the time, even when it's printing, especially on a, uh, a lower um, or a thing uh, that has an excess of 12 hours. It's like a, almost a day long print or if an AR-308 lower is even longer than that. Uh, sitting out for a day towards the end of the print, it's going to get, it's, the nylon is going to get very moist unless you have it in an enclosure. So it's important to always have it in a dry enclosure, um, even during printing. That is a bit of an inconvenience, something you're going to have to work out, figure out. Um, if you live in a really dry area, maybe it's not a problem. You can experiment. Um, but drying the nylon is 100% essential. And if you have an electric oven, that's a great option. I use a modified a food dehydrator, which I use to do my drying with, um, which works quite well. But whatever you do, you're going to have to dry the nylon. Okay, the second thing is prepping your printer. Now, only two things you have to be done on your printer. And, uh, well, well, three. Uh, number one, you're going to have to be able to get your hot end over the 260 degrees, 255 degrees Celsius that a semi-metal hot end uh, will extrude at. So a stock Ender printer, for an example, an Ender 3 has a hot end which is limited to around 260 degrees Celsius. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong there. But without an all-metal hot end, you can't really get hot enough to effectively print nylon. I print at 270 degrees Celsius. More testing might show that a little bit lower or a little bit hotter than that is better. I'm not quite sure, but I've gotten good results at 270 degrees Celsius. So you're going to need an all metal hot end is the first thing. The second thing, and you may already have one on your printer. The second thing is the nozzle needs to be a hardened nozzle. A brass nozzle will wear out very quickly, causing your extrusion width to be uh, not what it should be, and you will not get good print quality. So you want to print with a hardened steel nozzle. From the, what I've looked, uh, I've done some research online, I have a tungsten carbide nozzle on the way, which appears to be the best option because it has good heat resistance and it is very abrasion resistant, but a hardened steel nozzle is what I've been using and a hardened steel nozzle will work quite well. So um, you're gonna need a hard nozzle, hardened steel nozzle is gonna be your budget option. The third thing you're gonna need to do is to prep your printer's bed. Now, a lot of people put a lot of priority when printing nylon on getting the bed just right. Um, a lot of people recommend certain print surfaces, certain adhesives. I don't think it's actually that critical. I use Prusa's satin powder coated sheet, not their textured one. And for the bed adhesive on that satin powder coated sheet, I use the Vision Miner uh, adhesive, which they sell, bed adhesive. I've been experimenting with this bed adhesive and I got a bottle of it. It appears to work quite well. I think it works a little better than glue stick, a little more consistently, but at higher temperatures with polycarbonate particularly is why I use it. But um, I think a glue stick would work just as well for nylon. Um, that's what a lot of people use. So glue stick on glass or whatever your build surface happens to be, um, as long as it's something that has reasonable adhesion, the Prusa powder coated, just a plain powder coated textured sheet does not have good adhesion and probably is a bad option. But most sheets, you should be able to put down a, a layer of glue stick or whatever your favorite bed adhesive is. Um, I use the Vision Miner adhesive, and that will be good enough for the bed. You don't have to go through a lot of trouble to get super good bed adhesion because if you don't have your bed temperature right and the part wants to warp, it will warp no matter how good your bed adhesion is. Bed adhesion is not the way to stop warping. It just helps ensure a reliable print. So that's what I do for bed adhesion. I use the satin Prusa satin powder coated sheet and the Vision Miner adhesive. You can use a glass bed or whatever your printer bed is with glue stick and it should work just as well. The very last thing you're gonna have to do before printing your lower receiver is slicing the file. Now I've already done a dedicated video on slicer settings in general for printing lowers and you know things like that. And you can check that out. I'll see if I can link that video up here. That covers all your general settings, but there are a couple settings, the temperatures, which are critical for printing nylon. And this is really the most critical thing uh, that you can do when printing nylon, and that is to get your bed temperature where it needs to be. So for your nozzle temperature, I print at 270 degrees Celsius, probably a good place to start with nylon, though your nylon might be different. I really can't recommend something for whatever nylon you're using, um, but you can experiment a little. 270, 280 is probably a good area to print in. Now, the other temperature, which is the bed temperature, is really what makes or breaks a nylon print. The reason I had such horrible success with nylon originally was I was always printing nylon at 45 degrees Celsius bed temperature and up. I tried 45 degrees Celsius thinking that was a low temperature and I still got horrible warping. Dropping that bed temperature down to 35 cel degrees Celsius, which is around 90 something degrees Fahrenheit, I think, um, just kind of warm to the touch. That's it, 100 degrees Fahrenheit, 
just barely warm actually, just above room temperature. That is the key to getting a successful nylon print. There are two little tricks you can use. One of them uh, is something I actually used with PETG a long time ago to get good first layer adhesion, but it was suggested to me by a guy named uh, Lucky. If you're watching, drop a comment. Uh, he suggested using it for nylon with a few other tips, and um, I thought it's a really good idea, so I'll mention it. And that is running your first layer temperature. That is the very first layer on the bed turning your bed temperature to 90 degrees Celsius or some other high temperature, I use 90, and then printing the first layer at 90 degrees Celsius, which lets that nylon stick to the bed a little bit better, gets you a better first layer adhesion, and then for the rest of the print, dropping the bed down to the final temperature of 35 degrees Celsius. Mind you, I said 35 degrees Celsius. Don't go any warmer than that. Warmer than that, you will probably get warping, um, though you can leave your comments below about the results you've gotten. But I've had horrible warping. Um, above 35, I'm really above 40, but 35 is giving me excellent results. So the last little trick you can do to prevent the warping in general with any lower receiver is to use, in Prusa Slicer, there's a feature where you can add modifiers to a part. And when you add those modifiers, you can change things like infill density or wall thickness. And you can add a modifier like this to the front of your lower receiver and then in that area, reduce the infill from 100% aligned rectilinear infill, which I normally recommend, down to like 50% gyroid. What that does is it makes that area weaker, which is okay because it's a low stress area. This is the front of the magazine well. And then when you do that, you make that 50% gyroid, the gyroid infill does not, when it contracts, it doesn't pull the front of the lower up. So all that solid infill in there, when that solid infill contracts, it's going to tend to want to warp the front of the lower off, which is normally where lowers start to warp. If you use gyroid infill, it greatly reduces the chances of that happening. I now do it on all my nylon and polycarbonate lower prints, and I think it helps. So definitely go ahead and do that while slicing, and it will help prevent your lower from warping. So you should now be able to start your nylon lower print, and for room temperature, I actually have done several, uh, two prints right now, and both of these prints, the room temperature about halfway through the print dropped from the initial temperature of around 90 degrees Fahrenheit, dropped down about 70 degrees Fahrenheit ambient temperature on the printer, which is not that warm. In uh, neither case did that cause any warping that caused any problems. So uh, keeping a super warm temperature on the printer is not necessary to stop warping, but it's a good idea. It'll improve layer adhesion. So I would recommend having an enclosure around your printer and trying to keep the temperature in there around 100 degrees Fahrenheit um, or a little warmer if you can. But 100 degrees Fahrenheit is probably a, a good all around temperature. It'll help improve your layer adhesion and it'll reduce the chances of warp warping even further. But as I said, if you don't have an enclosure, not the end of the world, your lower should still print fine without warping with nylon, carbon fiber nylon specifically. Before we move on, I want to do want to mention that these techniques have worked really well for me printing both an LR308 and an AR15 lower receiver. But I have tried to print smaller parts like uh, tensile test samples, and those parts still warp pretty badly. And I think the reason for that is the part, the layer time is so short, the layers don't have a chance to cool off fully, and the layers stay warm, and when the layers are like warm and hot, they, I guess, soften, and that causes warping. I'm not totally sure why the super low bed temperature um, prevents warping and the high temperatures cause it. I didn't even mention this earlier because I really don't know. But it's something to do with softening the, the plastic, and when the plastic is a little bit softer because of the hot bed, it likes to warp. Uh, I don't have a good explanation. I haven't seen a particularly good explanation on this. I'll have to still look into it. If you have a good explanation or even a bad one, leave it below and I'll check it out. Um, but printing really small parts with shorter layer times, I have still had lots of warping problems. So these techniques only really work for big parts. On a small part, you can probably just slow the speed on the part way down to kick your layer time back up, and then you should be able to print the part successfully, though I haven't tried that yet or had much success with small parts in general. Let's touch on once the print is finished. Once you've finished your print, it should look pretty good I'll be on your printer and not have warped hardly at all. A little bit of curling around the edges of the print is lifting up a little tiny bit, like a 32nd of an inch, is normal. PETG does that. Um, the nylon does do that. And that's not really a problem. It shouldn't affect anything. As long as you don't have any big warping, like the whole front end warps off and causes your print to fail, you should be good. So post-processing is the next step. You're going to need to remove your support material. I did do a video on that. And then you're going to need to get some drill bits and clean out the holes on the lower specifically because nylon does not bridge as well as other plastics do, so it sags a little bit. And because of that sagging, um, it'll, that sagging will interfere with your pins and stuff like your selector switch and your takedown pin on your lower receiver. So you want to clean those out and, and then and remove the support material first 
And then if there's any other areas in the lower, like around your pistol grip attachment point, you might want to sand that a bit or file it. And then the other area you got to file, which is pretty critical, is your magazine catch slot. You want to file that until your magazine catch fits really nicely. File it on the top side. All this processing is to remove any overhangs which have sagged too far. You might not have to do it. Um, but you might have to, so always check. The reason I mention this is because you want to do this quickly. Once the part finishes printing, you want to quickly do the post-processing and get it all completed so you don't have to cut the lower later because what happens with nylon is it absorbs moisture over time, which is actually a good thing. Um, it, to me, looking at it, it appears, though I haven't done much testing with it, it appears that it uh, improves impact resistance and improves layer adhesion. So that's why you want to remove your support material and um, clean the holes out quickly because otherwise the plastic gets a lot tougher and harder to cut and drill and work with, which makes it a pain. So do that quickly, and then you might want to just either keep set your water in a sink, uh, set your lower in a sink of water to absorb some moisture, or just leave it out in the open for a few days to absorb moisture to get a little bit more um, ductile before you use it on an actual firearm and do the actual final assembly. That'll make sure that you don't have any cracks and that you have optimal layer adhesion. Final thing I want to mention here, and that is that carbon fiber nylon is not your only nylon option. There are other nylons out there. I have tested a few of them. Glass fiber nylons, I've not been impressed with them. The one other nylon I've been impressed with is the Alloy 910 from Toloman uh, 3D. And that is a straight nylon, no carbon fiber or glass fiber fill, but it's not an ordinary nylon. It has some really interesting properties, great layer adhesion, great tensile strength, okay impact resistance, and it is quite flexible. So um, it's more flexible than carbon fiber nylon, not good for pistol frames probably, but probably is a good option for lowers. I have not tried printing it with the new low temperature uh, technique on the bed, but I'm guessing it works pretty good. So that uh, Toloman Alloy 910, if you do go to print that, try printing it with a really low 35C bed temperature and you'll probably have good results. I wanna mention that here because that is the one other nylon that I have been impressed with. That's all for today. Um, that is all of my tips um, and tricks for printing with carbon fiber nylon. So far I've had great results, but just to summarize, if you didn't catch it earlier, your key things are going to be 35C bed temperature, so really, really cool, barely warm bed, and then having a clean bed with just a good adhesive on it, steel nozzle, and when you slice the lower, use a lower infill density for the front end of the lower receiver. And last but not least, dry your nylon. It is really important to keep the nylon bone dry when printing with it. That's that. Thanks for watching and I will catch you again in the next video.